welcome Media Glitch fans. I'm your host for this segment, Miranda, and I've got with me the slightly less lovely than Ashley, Joel Valley. Just slightly less. Just slightly, Just slightly less. less. He's pretty yeah. fabulous. She is sitting right here. <laughs> Uh, we have an interesting game to Whoa. review today. We're just going to throw that right no, up just, there. Just, so, that's, spoilers! That's like, Sorry. He wants to get home. He's like, let's just do this. Just, <laughs> let's just go home. Just play all the assets at the same time. That's totally <laughs> fine. So, we are going to introduce the game uh, Shotgun Legend. Now, this little game comes to us as a one-man production from, I believe, Jonathan Tindell. I believe this is the name. Uh, this game is a... Zelda, ask, you know, yeah, Zelda type game. That. It's totally his tribute to the original Zelda on the NES. You, oh, look you, at that! Even that. Though. Oh yeah, That's so you Zelda. go into the different dungeons. You, you know, they're shortish dungeons. You go and you pick up individual weapons. You fight, you know, bosses. You, you know, you know, you can even see. I think I've got the map in there. They're all different shapes. Very much standard Zelda fair stuff. I like so. that zoom in effect. I know. You well, yeah, it's got that in Zelda. It, that's right. This is some hi-fi right here. That is. <laughs> This is 2017. They zoom in. Yes. Now, so. now I guess this is technically the second game uh, from this developer. Mm -hmm. um, he has another one that takes place on... I, I didn't get a chance to review it too much, but it's very, very basic. So again, one-man production, which is pretty impressive. Uh, the game is available on Steam for $9.99, but if you go to Jonathan Tindell's website, he has the game available for half of that as an early release. Part of that is because the game is not finished yet. Uh, the last dungeon in the game is actually not ready. Uh, so let's dig in a little bit into the game. It is a pretty standard Zelda clone uh, in no uncertain circumstances. You, you look in here and you're gonna see that it's obviously very Zelda based, but that doesn't mean it's not fun. Uh, you have I mean, secret it is rooms. Fun. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it kind of does, right? Um, one of the coolest aspects in here that you're probably seeing a lot is the fact that you can actually have two players. Uh, oh, so no. yeah, for sure. you have to be on the same screen. You just plug in the other controller, but you can have two players, which is a lot more fun than running around with just one because you're you know solving the different puzzles or whatever. Um, also, the bad guys, the puzzles are pretty pretty brutal. Uh, I died a lot. That's I died good. A lot. I died a lot in games. Uh, so I don't know the. <laughs> There's nine dungeons so far as you play through. Again, the 10th dungeon is not quite done. And, and then, I managed and to- And an overworld as well? There is okay. an overworld, that's correct. Um, and it, again, just think of Zelda 1. You start into the world, you enter a cave, and you find a man who gives you a shotgun. Shoddy. So the story is this super- This is my boomstick. This, the, shot, the, the shotgun legend, the legend of shotgun, is super weird, basically. Uh, and I had the clip in here, but you kind of look it up. You, basically play this dude who was just digging through a junkyard looking for a hubcap and that hubcap just so happened to have some powers that sent him into another dimension that happened to be getting ruled by some aliens and they need that hubcap but it's shattered into oh what eight pieces eight ten pieces i don't know like triforce one might think uh so yes so that's your that's your base story it's i mean if very, you're gonna have a crazy story, story you might as well go all out hubcap aliens well, yeah, exactly. It's it's unapologetically a, a ridiculous tribute. If Tenacious D made a video game, this is it. Now, the game isn't, I mean, it's mostly a Zelda clone, but it's got some unique aspects. Again, one of my favorite parts is the fact that you can have another player playing with you on it, which is really hilarious when you're dealing with the, uh, with the overworld. Now, you pick up a banjo that you play presumably poorly because that kills the ghosts. Uh, some of the puzzles in the game, there's not a whole lot of them, but they, they're pretty cute where you you know, you know shoot in the right place and you can remove blocks. They're very, very basic puzzles. Uh, there's save points throughout the game, these little medical first aid kits, uh, and that gets you to, um, that gets you saved mark points. So if you do die, you come back there. It does remember how much health, and it even remembers how much ammo and stuff that you had mm. before dying, so you don't end up losing out on that. You could experiment with some things. Uh, just as a tip, don't underestimate how many hits like an object or bad guy can take because you can fight for a while. Um, I guess another thoughts, you know, it's a fairly simple game and when all you have is a shotgun, you are going to use your shotgun for pretty much solving every single puzzle in the game. Um, there's not, there's not too much depth to these puzzles. I mean, there's some occasional things that you'll use, like again, the banjo. Um, 
And in here is actually kind of neat. You find a gas mask to get you through some of the toxic areas of the woods, but you basically have a lot of woods. Uh, you have like, I don't know, not, not necessarily like an ice dungeon, but you use this wave cannon to, to eliminate crystal. Uh, some stuff you fight in the dark. This actually ended up being a really cool boss fight. So most stuff is, is pretty tough. Like that last boss. Looks like there's content. There is. I would say there's a solid five hours of gameplay before you get to the last dungeon. Yeah, and, and I mean, to be fair, I mean, it, it was certainly very enjoyable. Again, my favorite aspect of it was as a multiplayer game. Uh, here's one of the alien dudes that you fight. It's pretty good, you know, it sort of explains it a little more. And you can see his health along the bottom, so you don't have to just guess All as right. to how, how long you have to fight. Um, that doesn't... That doesn't go into everything you fight in the game, but um, it, it does work well for, for the boss fights. So right overall, it was actually a pretty fun game. It's definitely worth it if you buy it from the developer's website directly. Again, Jonathan Tyndall, uh, his website has it for about $4.99. Otherwise, you can pick it up on Steam for $9.99. You know, give them a little, little bump. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a fun game for what it was. Probably a good five hours of gameplay, I think I said. So. And there's still the last dungeon to come. Last engine to come. You gotta, you gotta fight whatever the main alien guy is. I guess. I'm sure his name is not Ganon. Probably not. Like not hyphen Ganon. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. So anyway, that's my opinion of the game, and it can be your opinion too. <laughs> uh, definitely check it out on Steam, and um, please leave a comment. Don't forget to like if you liked this video. I'm sure you'll let us know if you don't, and uh, we will see you guys next time. <laughs> you're gonna...